Hello, very welcome to Kachwerke. Um, and as always, this is about getting things done nicely, but not with too much expenses. So looking at uh, most of the stuff I've done, videos have revolved around um, using VSTs, um, you know, using Amplitube, stuff like that to get good guitar tones. But um, I did a video long ago, which please have a look at it. And um, trying to explain that it's not that hard to actually <clears throat> um, record things well, um, dare I say, analog. So uh, recording an amp, recording a drum set. So the previous one was about drums and I thought, well, why don't I show you how easy it is to get a fairly decent sound um, miking up a guitar cap. So there's lots of videos uh, online about how to record guitars um, and I don't want to counter any of them. What I'm trying to do is show you more or less that you can do it on a fairly tight budget fairly well. So what I've got here, we're going to do two things. Um, just to show you these, is, this is what I'm going to be using. No SM57 in sight. So these are, just to show you where am I, these are the Behringer C2s. Uh, I don't know if you can see them. They, let me just show you quickly. They are dirt cheap. They are pencil condensers. They are pencil condensers. Um, they're great for overheads. They're really great for things like acoustic guitar. They're all these kind of things. They're really good for guitar as well, especially if you don't go too loud. And they can take quite a bit of um, decibels, but um, I'm assuming putting them in front of a 4x12 is maybe, and uh, you know, Putting it full on is maybe not the best idea, but you can always check. I've not checked it. Um, so the good thing about them is that they're extremely flat response. So there's a lot you can do with the signal and they're quite clean. They've got quite a bit of uh, headroom and they are have quite a, uh, a low noise floor. Now with all the Behringer products, there's people complaining that they sound shit or they've got problems with them. In my opinion, that seems to me the problem with Behringer is that they actually, their products are quite good, but their um, quality checking isn't that good, which means that if that is the issue with yours, just return it and get a new ones and see if they're better because they most likely are going to be. So it's not that the products are really that shit. It's more that you probably get a, a dud, dare I say. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the reason I'm using these is that they're very cheap. I mean, for this, for this set, it comes with this stand, so not, not this, uh, not the, um, the mic stand, but this bar and being able to put the two together to have like a stereo image, or whatever you want to do with it. It's really good for pointing at different places uh, on a uh, acoustic guitar or something. I've used them on snare, um, uh, a ride, lots of different things. There's overheads, they are, they are absolutely fine. Get a, get a good set and they'll work perfectly. Now in front of a guitar cab, so this is a 4x12 cab, uh, what am I saying, a 1x12, um, and it's actually one of the valve state uh, amps, but I'm not using the valve state. I'm actually unplugging, um, plugging it into the Joyo uh, band amp. It is the Meteor one. I just prefer the sound. And so we're going to do two things today. We're going to use both and blend the two. Um, because I think that's part of the problem getting a good guitar tone. Just putting one mic in there doesn't capture the speaker. It captures a part of the speaker. So what you need to try and do is capture as much as you can of the speaker and blend the two together um, to be able to, to get a, a full image of what's happening. <clears throat> so we're going to do two things. Uh, and that's just why this is so good is because I can manipulate the angles. So I can do, I'm going to try two things, excuse me, more. over tighten it. So one thing is that we can put one on the cone and we can point one towards the edge. That's quite classic. 
um, and obviously because you can swivel you can make sure that the diaphragms are in line with one another so you don't have any phase issues and realistically at these short distances you're not going to have many phase issues anyway but what's also cool is you can do the Fredman technique with this um, now obviously if you take these off which I wouldn't because I think they help a lot with the um, the air pressure to be able to take more uh, volume um, you can as you can see you can try and find your 45 degrees and you put this one onto the cone and this one is just off angle, the classic Fredman technique, which is usually done with SM57s. And you can buy 57 for like 100 pounds and the little Fredman clip for, I don't know, another gazillion dollars or something. So this does it for you. This whole thing, except the mic stand, um, is I think it's something like 40 pounds on Amazon. And they were perfectly fine. And because you've got settings on your pencil, so you've got uh, a low cut. Um, I'll show you here. There is a low cut. And then there's a minus 10 dB attenuation. And we will use them. We will go to the minus 10. That means we can put the amp on a little bit louder than we should. One of the problems that I've noticed um, over the years looking at demos and people complaining about things not sounding right in my opinion has a lot to do with the fact that most of the gear around uh, is designed around an amp actually being switched on properly uh, but most people do demos at fairly low um, volumes okay so that means the speaker isn't really working the preamps aren't really working the tubes aren't really working um, so you're not getting the designed um, tone out of them. I mean, amps are designed to amplify. So if you are playing them low, you're just not getting uh, where it's where it's designed to go. If you've got a 100 watt amp, it's not designed to be played in your bedroom and get a great tone. It's designed to be on stage um, being switched on. So I want to get a bit of volume out of the amp. <clears throat> now I need to just check which one was which. Now oh, this one, okay. So, so all we're doing is you can do two things. Is um, so I'm putting I'm putting the one on the cone, right on the cone. If you can see that here, this one is going to go right on the cone. Cone is right in the middle. I just know that because I've already checked them. And this one, I'm pointing a little bit towards the side wall here. So this is the speaker here, roughly the end. So one is the side wall, uh, the paper essentially, cardboard, and this one is straight at the cone. Now you can do a couple of things. You can run them through a little desk as uh, the Glenn Fricker has shown, where you run them both through the desk, you do the mixing to taste on the desk and you line it out and have one signal coming into your door. In this case, I am not doing that uh, for a reason. I think that you've got more control because you, you might need to do X, Y and Z uh, in your mix. So what I do is I record them both, sum them to one track and then treat them and blend them uh, that way. So what we'll do is uh, we will first do this and then another one as well and we'll have a quick uh, audio sample of it. So I'm just gonna quickly re-switch everything on and off. So we'll use this configuration first. Let me just plug this guy in so it stops making a noise because I've got the drive engaged. Phantom power on. These are um, phantom powered. So uh, 
that's the camera now I'm gonna start um I'll monitor them Now mind, I've got the speakers on, the monitors on, I've got the, um, they're right below me here, so they're maybe not even two feet away from me. The amp is up but it's far from massively loud. And that's one of the other reasons why I attenuate them down to minus 10 because actually, uh, because they're quite um, directional they don't pick up a lot of additional noises so you can literally record in this situation so let me record these
So that's the one configuration. Apologies, I get carried away. So now we're gonna do the X, Y. I must admit, I'm just estimating. So there you have it, that is recorded straight. Um, now, what we can show you here is that I mistakenly, I mistakenly left the effects on. That means that what's happening, the root is basically, they go into the interface, the interface into the door, they are being monitored um, and so the monitoring goes out into the little additional recorder. So what you heard there was live. It's actually literally straight what went in there. Um, so what we can do now quickly is just show you what happens. Um, so this is the first one we recorded with the, the Y um, sides. <laughs> That's with all the effects off. So as you can see, they are actually rooted um, to, the, to, the, to an aux, and then effects applied, some compression, some EQing, etc. cetera. Um, and so with a little bit of, I've not changed anything now, so you'll hear it. This was something that we have recorded that I've recorded earlier. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, that piece was just to set up and test some stuff that was done in the same configuration as it is now, the kind of Redmond technique or whatever it's called, um, with the slightly off axis um, kind of uh, setup. So, uh, pencil mics, 
comes with a stand, you can set them up in front of your amp, you've got your two very clear, very flat response. Uh, you can work a lot more on the recording than I have. Like I said, this is very raw, it goes straight in, some basic uh, manipulation, it goes straight into a little recorder, um, so there's no additional manipulation going on there. When I edit the video, what's going to happen is this is going to go into um, um, Reaper again with the voice, with all the other audio that I've recorded. And then all I'm going to do is mix them together. But I'm not going to cheat and kind of additionally try and make the guitar tracks sound any better. I would probably just kind of um, compress them a little bit in order to bring them up in the mix and that's it. But I won't change any kind of additional things. So um, a little bit of a rudimentary, rudimentary kind of demo here, but you can get really good sounds. I think the most important thing is that uh, I prefer flat response um, microphones. I prefer ones that can take a little bit of volume because the more volume you can get out of your speaker and out of your amp, the better they sound. Um, uh, make sure that the amp sounds good first, so it's pointless trying to record something that sounds like crap, so try and get a decent amp. Um, if you set it up in the room right, it, it doesn't pick up too many things outside of the actual enclosed area where you're trying to record because they're quite directional and you are attenuating them, so additional sounds from outside, um, the, the, the kind of main environment where you're pointing that, pointing them doesn't really come through that much um, but obviously I've taken no care here if you want to you can obviously ISO box them you can do whatever you want to try and make that signal cleaner um, what else is there um, Behringer stuff honestly they're absolutely fine um, just make sure that if yours doesn't sound good or has problems it's most likely a dud so just send the damn thing back and get it replaced um, and yeah, I probably think that it's better to mix them in here. And I think that it probably sounds better if you mix it through a mixing desk and then just record one, um, one instance of it. So one track, having them mixed together beforehand. I understand why you would do that. But I think that you have a little bit more control over the way that you blend the two. I'll give you an example. So if we play them back... <laughs> So that's obviously the wall, and this. is the cone. So you can blend them nicely. Um, and again, this is far from a great amp or anything like that, it's just that standard stuff. So you can get really good tones. Um, you'll notice also when you get to mixing um, guitar, if you use tracks from Amplitude, especially if they are actually still in the VST format, so you didn't kind of print them and working just with the WAV file, there's something about it, and I don't know if it's just me, but it just feels as if if you record tracks with microphones, um, they sit better in mixes. So to recap, um, 40, 50 pounds for the pair is probably less than that in dollars, roughly the same. Um, comes with everything you need, except obviously cables. Interface, this is the Euphoria UMC 2020, also a Behringer. Can record up to 192 kilohertz. Sample rate, absolutely amazing. Midas preamps, again, not one glitch with this thing. I've heard other people, they've had problems. I think it's um, I think it's quality control. So if you don't get one that's good, fucking send it back and have it uh, replaced. Um, the, the amp is a standard kind of valve state, a Marshall valve state, um, with a one by twelve speaker cab. The amp I've used was the Joe Banta Meteor because I love the sound of it, and so um, that's driving the speaker, not the Marshall, not the valve state. Um, the distortion was the Blackstar HT Dual, um, just on the, well, I actually used both channels separately. Um, the microphones are as close as possible to the speaker, keeping the grill on and having the little 
um, muffles on at the front as well. I think the muffles help with high pressure from sound, so you can switch it on quite high. It's attenuated to minus 10. Um, we are in the house, uh, thanks to COVID and all those things. There's people mowing the lawn outside and neighbor is grinding some stuff. I think he's building a new gate or something. And um, So the point is, this was recorded here uh, with no care. I was playing the guitar not even two feet from the microphones. Um, there's wind outside and if you, if you put the if you put the amp up loud enough, it, everything else goes away because they are um, very directional and attenuated minus 10. So all the kind of uh, lower level kind of noises, you don't really hear that much. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is like, this was a no care situation. Like I put them in front to see what that microphone sound like. So if you take a little bit more care, use a bit of muffling, you a little bit of care when and how you do it, you can get a good tones uh, through the microphones, um, recording your own um, amp. Um, obviously, the amp should sound half decent, so don't if the amp doesn't sound good to your ears, don't even bother putting mics in front of it. Um, what I would suggest as well is that record the guitar clean. Uh, what I mean by that is don't put any modulation, delays, um, reverbs, anything like that on um, while you're recording it record the guitar clean and put all your delays and modulations afterwards. It gives you more control. Um, and the more pedals you use, you do introduce more hisses and stuff like that. And if you're not really cranking the amp, you will probably hear a lot of those noises coming through the speaker. So unless you rely on those effects to help you playing like a, like a, a slapback delay or something that you're playing against, um, I would leave that alone and put it in into the door afterwards. Um, what I also like about playing, recording with an amp and having the door and the speakers running is that it feels more like you're, I hate fucking headphones, right? I, you, you, there's a disconnect when you put headphones on. Um, so if you've got microphones or a way of recording guitar or anything like that, but you, you're monitoring through the speakers, uh, your monitor speakers, um, nice and loud, you feel as if you're playing with something or someone. You've got a more of a feeling of playing. So I think that, that this helps as well. Um, that's why I like the process of actually playing through your amp and then DIing out the speaker output and putting an, uh, an IR, applying an IR in the end. That, that's another way I like to do it. But that's because it means that I can play with the song. The earphones feel like it's, it's here, it doesn't surround you, you don't feel as connected in my opinion. Um, so it's a nice way to jam along with drum set, you know, with a, with a drum kit that's been pre-recorded or, you know, MIDI drums or whatever you want, whatever you want. The point is, it feels better. Um, you actually feel like you're making music. If you do everything through the headphones and everything is sterile and VST, it has a, it has a certain lack of joy behind it. You know, having an amp going and recording the amp just feels better. So there you go. You can do it. Not a problem. It's actually not that hard. Just like the drum recording, it really isn't that hard. Um, make sure you set your amp to sound good. Make sure that amp sounds good. Um, get clean microphones with clean preamps. Um, give yourself options. So uh, record just off. I actually put this on the cone. So this was all on the cone, but I actually usually have it right pointed right next to the cone um, and then off to the side wall and blend to taste and you're done. Um, yeah, so there you go. Thank you very much.